Our journey into combinatorics continues. Uh, we're going to talk about unordered samples with and without replacement. And the reason this uh, slideshow is not entitled unordered samples is because unordered samples is also kind of the story of this number called a binomial coefficient. Um, so this slide deck here is going to give us about four videos worth of content, and we're going to uh, learn a lot of interesting and useful combinatorial methods on the way. So let's get started. Uh, so here's a little bit of review of what we've done so far. Uh, we've talked about the number of ways to order sample r elements from a universe omega of n elements with and without replacement. Uh, so, so far what we've seen is that the formula to do this with replacement is n to the r because we can basically multiply the number of elements in the universe by itself over and over again because we're not running out of uh, any sort of we're not running out of elements, right? We're not spending the elements by sampling them, so we basically multiply n by n by n by n. Uh, and then with replacement, this kind of gives us this falling factorial thing, n times n minus one times n minus two uh, times dot, 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 times n minus r plus one. So this goes down with each uh, multiplication because we spend an element each time we use it. We don't replace. Uh, you'll see that the other two formulas are here, but grayed out because we haven't uh, learned them yet. So those will fill in as the lectures go. All right, so next we're gonna count the number of unordered samples of r elements from a set omega with n elements when the elements may not be repeated. So we're gonna kinda of go in the opposite order this time. We're gonna start without replacement. As usual, we start with this example. We're gonna to enumerate to count how many unordered samples, unordered, very important here, samples of size two can be taken from the universe omega of A, B, C, and D if the elements may not be repeated. All right, so I can't repeat. Well, wow, that's, nope, mm -mm, that's not it. And the samples are unordered, so I wanna be careful with that. Okay, um, so as usual, I'm gonna start with the A's. I get the element AB. I can do AC, and I can do AD. I can't do AA because I'm not allowed to repeat elements and I can't do BA either because I'm not allowed to distinguish based on order. The samples are unordered. So I'm gonna have to start with BC and then I can do BD uh, and then I can do CD. I can't do CA, CB or CC because those have already either been taken or are not allowed. Uh, and then D, I can't do anything starting with D, right? Uh, so we can just count these, right? Three plus two plus one makes six. So that's our answer. But as is before, we wanna know how would we arrive at this number based on what else we know? So remember, that the number of ways to arrange the entire set is 24. There's 24 ways to arrange the elements A, B, C, and D. We can take that 24 and divide it by the number of ways to arrange the unordered elements, the, the unselected elements, that two there, and we get 12. All right, so this is the number of ways to order the whole set. This is the number of ways to order two elements. And hopefully by now you're thinking, well, hey, we can get from 12 to six by dividing by two again. And that's exactly how it works. So not only are we dividing by the number of ways to order the stuff that we don't care about, we're also dividing by the number of ways to order the stuff that we do care about. So that's how we go from 24 total orderings to 12 partial orderings to six samples with no order. We divide by two. Uh, two is both the number of ways to order the stuff that we do care about, or so that we don't care about, and the number of ways to order the stuff that we do care about. All right, so uh, the number of unordered samples without replacement 
of R elements, sometimes these are called R combinations from a universe omega, is n factorial, so that's the number of ways to order the entire set, divided by the number of ways to order the stuff we don't care about and the number of ways to order the stuff we do care about. So that's the, uh, the example for this number. And we write this kind of in the strange notation um, that's called a binomial coefficient. We write this as four choose two. That's the notation for this expression. Um, these samples may be regarded, this is important, as subsets of omega. Think about it. Uh, what's a set? A set has no order and no replacement. No repetition. You can't repeat elements in a set. Uh, so those are exactly subsets of omega whose cardinality is R. Uh, so like I said, we call this symbol a binomial coefficient and the way that we read it as n choose R. I want to say something right here. This is not a fraction. All right, this is a fraction. This is not a fraction. We do not draw a line in between the four and the two. We just keep them on top of each other in the parentheses. Okay, here's an example that is not totally obvious that it's an unordered sample without replacement. Um, you have to kind of be explained how we can think of it that way. Uh, so a bit string is a word from the alphabet 0, 1. We talked a little bit about words and alphabets in the last set of videos. Uh, but what that basically means is that a bunch of zeros and ones uh, in some kind of order. So for example, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. There's a, there's a bit string, right? It's a bit string of length 6. Uh, and to give you another example, a binary number is a bit string that starts with a 1. All right, we usually don't write binary numbers starting with zeros. Uh, and so the question is, how many bit strings of length five contain exactly two ones? Uh, and so the first thing we've got to do is convince ourselves that this is an unordered sample without replacement. So let's take our five characters in our string. That's what these are called. These are called characters. Uh, and I have to make two of them one. I'm going to pick this one and this one. So this is my second character and my fifth character. All right, and then I have to make my other characters zeros. So I did it, I've made one of the strings that I'm being asked to count. But I want you to notice, first of all, that once I've chosen the second character to be a one, I can't also let the second character be a zero. Once I've spent one of my characters, once I've chosen whether it's going to be a one or a zero, I can't do that again. So in that sense, there is no repetition. Here's another thing. Even though this one is the second character and this one is the fifth character, if I swapped the positions of those ones, you wouldn't be able to tell. You wouldn't, all you can tell is that they're ones. You can't tell which one I wrote down first. So it's also unordered. We can think of it this way, right? So here's my, I have a first character, a second character, a third character, a fourth character, and a fifth character. So I can make the bit string by shuffling the order of my characters and saying, okay, only the first two of you are gonna get to be ones, and then the remainder of you are gonna get to be zeros. Well, there are five factorial ways to shuffle the five characters. There are two factorial ways to shuffle the ones. Again, I don't care what order those are in, they're just both ones. And there's three factorial ways to shuffle the zeros. So there are five choose two, computed as five factorial over two factorial, three factorial, such bit strings. Uh, we can compute this. We're going to exploit the recursive property of the factorial. So five factorial is five times four times three factorial. Uh, two factorial is just two, so this becomes five times two, which is ten. There are ten bit strings 
of Link 5 with exactly two ones.